Hi, my name is Rachel. Welcome to my channel, Learning with Boys. Today, I want to talk about math curriculum. All right, welcome. If you are new here, I'm a homeschool mom of four boys ages 9 to 19. I've been homeschooling for almost 14 years. I want to talk about the subject of math curriculum and what we have used over the years. I'm going to just start out from our beginning of our journey and tell you what we've used, what we've liked, what we are still using today. Okay, I'm going to start out with my oldest because that's where we begun and he went to a Christian school in K4 in kindergarten and used a Becca and then when he came home for first and second grade, that is what he used was a Becca. Um, I then was introduced to a variety of curriculums and one of those curriculums was Matthew C. So I decided to try that the next year. He was in third grade and then I also had a kindergartner who would have started in the first book which should have, which was Primer and then my oldest started with Gamma. Now I want to tell you if this curriculum you use it and it runs smoothly for you and you don't have to slow down for anybody which I have had to do, you will end up doing algebra in eighth grade, which worked out great for my oldest because he likes numbers, he loved math, and he liked the challenge. So it really was no problem for him. He moved well through Matthew C. He ended up doing geometry and their algebra too. For that, I will tell you what he used for pre-cal pre in a minute. But I want to mention just a couple things about Matthew C. They start with the primer and you can, you could probably start that in K4. I never did. I always waited till kindergarten. I never rushed math. Of course, you know, in preschool ages, we always talked about numbers. We counted, we introduced everything. It's not like they weren't, did not understand. So, um, but primer is pretty basic. And then it goes into addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, division. And then next year, what my fifth grader will be using is, I it right here in front of me, is epsilon, which will be fractions. And then I think it goes into decimals in the next book and then pre-algebra. But in those younger years, they do have a hands-on um, math blocks they use. I'm just going to show you. I just keep them in a bucket like this. And some of my boys have used these a lot. Some of them have just used them for the introduction or the lesson. And that was it. Now, when I say introduction or lesson, there is a video. And um, that comes along with each book. And so the lesson for the video is once a week and it introduces the new concept which we really like mr. Steve is the who does these videos he had four boys of his own and um, good godly man I've heard him speak at different other occasions besides just math I've heard him talk about homeschooling and it was really encouraging so sort of like him anyways <laughs> um, and his family but it has worked well for us but I do want to mention a couple other things that we have used so this has been a majority of our math is Matthew C now I'm going to talk about my oldest real quick first before I get into a couple of the other maths that I have used for my second and third son um, for my oldest we used think well he used that for pre-cal and he actually only did it a semester um, he was working and um, just trying to get the basics for school and then he did ended up doing um, a dual credit his senior year and then he was pretty much done he worked and he is in a welding associates program graduates this May and um, but I will want to tell you that he is still all about numbers sometimes he'll come home if I'm in the middle of some problems trying to explain to um, one of my other boys I will ask him for help and he usually has no problem helping me um, so I just wanted to tell you that to let you know that he used Matthew C most of the way through 
and it, you know, he's a math guy. He likes numbers. I also want to mention another program he used for fun, and that is the art of problem solving. And he came about that in eighth, ninth grade, and it really was just um, a way he was able to communicate. He got on the site. I'm not even sure how it all worked. It was a friend of his who also is amazing at math and was a little bit older and we knew the family really well but they would somehow the it was some type of program where they would have certain problems and you would have to just sort of come up and solve them whether you really knew how, how to do it or not you would have to figure it out he loved the challenge he enjoyed doing it they would communicate about it so I let him do that for a while. He probably did that for about a year, and it was just something he might do in the evening, that type of thing. But if you have a student that really is, you know, is going to go down to math um, in college, that's going to be something they're really going to focus on, whether it be engineering or just um, any type of math program. That would be a great thing to look in too, and I'll link that below, which is art of the art of problem solving. And I want to also mention, I don't know if anybody is familiar with Beast Academy. They have student books, but they also have an online class, and that is for the younger students. And I think from what I can tell, the art of problem solving has that is part of their program. So they do that in the younger years, and then as they get older, they move into the books from um, the older books would be called Art of Problem Solving, and the younger is Beast Academy. I'm a little bit familiar with Beast Academy because my youngest used a couple other books just as a side to sort of help clarify some things, I think in first or second grade. I wanna say it was two something, so maybe it was second grade. So, and we just used one or two of the books that year, like for a semester, and it went fine. It's not something I would want to use for him for a main curriculum, but um, if somebody handed me a book, I'd probably open it up and use it. So I did wanna, so those are a couple more things that I mentioned. Um, those are a few more maths that were sort of just tried. So still our main program has always been Matthew C, but I do wanna mention um, my second son, when he went into ninth, he is my one that struggles with math. Um, I did a video on um, ADHD and his struggles there and his focus. And I want to mention that we ended up using teaching textbooks for him his ninth grade year. It didn't really go real well. <laughs> um, I wanted it to. I wanted it to work. I wanted to say, this is it. This is what everybody's using. This is going to help him get through high school. That was my goal. But it didn't really work for him. And I want to tell you why I think it didn't is because of how distractible he is. You know, you're watching this video for however so long and just the way they did the problems. I don't know. I think there needed to be a little bit more clarity for him. And I do think it helped somewhat um you know it wasn't a complete loss it was mostly that he did not finish it so um we actually discounted that year as a pre-algebra and then the next year he did saxon math algebra so he went through this and he actually did well it's almost like he really wasn't ready for the full-blown algebra maybe yet um and he did this, but we did use the DVDs from Art Reed. Now this is, um, Mr. Reed does a lesson every day on a whiteboard and explains things to you. And um, it's a very short, short lesson, and then you just do the work. So um, I started out that year just really sitting with him and making sure he grasped and understood. And he ended up doing well, I mean, from what I could tell. So we might have to review a few times. So that was his 10th grade year. And then in 11th, he ended up doing, back to Matthew C, geometry. And that went fine too. 
And this year, um, one other math <laughs> that we are trying is, it is a Mr. D math. It's an online program and he's just doing the consumer math, but he's really liking it. Um, he comes and talks to me, hey, did you know this? Things are benefiting him for, you know, just help him with financial things, to think things through, um, just your basic stuff that you would want a student to learn before they graduated. Now it's different than finance, like we used um, the Dave Ramsey Homeschool Finance Program for um, the half credit of finance that was required. So, but consumer math is a little bit different, it teaches you a lot, like he even had to start out making sure he understood basic algebra. And then it got into some other things um, that more had to do with like the consumer part of math. So that has went well for him. Um, I may even do it with my next one. I'm not sure yet, but he's 12th grade getting ready to graduate. So my third one comes around, uses Matthew C all the way through until about seventh grade. We tried Saxon math that year. I want to say it was the seven, the eight, seven. Can't remember how it's numbered. We used the art DVDs for that year. Um, it went well, but he asked to go back to Matthew C. And I think because the lessons are shorter. But we came back, we were gonna try, and if you watched any of my videos this year, we were using this Algebra One book. Cause he is doing, I mean, he's doing better than my second one did in math. So he's doing fine but it was just so much and that he was getting into things that he couldn't understand and to keep up and feel the pressure of getting this book done. Um, it just really was not working. It's a lot of time to do a Saxon math. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that. Um, I think if you love math and it's, you enjoy it, but he had other priorities in his life and you know, we have to get the math done. It's important. So, First year trying, we are trying the CT math. I never thought I would try it. I tried it for a, a month back in February. I think I mentioned that in one of my videos and it's going really well for him. There are short lessons he listens to, he does the problems, it grades him right away, does all the work for me. Now there's been about a few times that I've had to sit down, sort of look at some things go back and watch it with them. But after that, it seemed like, oh, okay. Like maybe he just missed one thing. It was nothing major and he understood it and he's moving on. And I just think the shorter lessons um, and being able just to do the work, there's been a couple times where he's done a couple, two lessons in a day. So um, just wanted to share that with you. I am thinking at this point that we may stick with this through his 10th grade year. I will let you know in our when we do the final 10th grade curriculum, but I need to look at it just a tad bit more, but I'm pretty sure if this is working that I may stick with it. So that is all the things that we use for math. And yes, right now I am using Matthew C for my youngest. Um, he did try Saxon like in second grade because a friend of mine gave me all the stuff and um, it went okay. I, I don't I don't see any problems with it. I just, as the parent and the teacher, I liked Matthew C and I feel like um, I don't think it really affected him either way <laughs> with math, which direction he was gonna go. Okay, I hope this video on some math, different math curriculum was insightful, was helpful. Um, if you like this type of content, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching.